the last mainline Infamous game released in 2014. Yes, 2014, and people are still clamoring for a new game. These offbeat superhero games took PlayStation fans by storm, and their presence is still felt to this day. So let's take a look back at where it all started and what made the original Infamous game such a big deal. So for starters, Sucker Punch Productions is a Bellevue, Washington-based game developer that was founded in 1997, believe it or not. Their first game was, uh, let me see here, uh, Rocket Robot on Wheels for Nintendo 64. It's this bouncy, fun little game that definitely skewed towards younger audiences, but it had its fans. But now looking back at history, it, it reads like it took the small team quite a lot of effort to get it made, but it didn't necessarily take off according to the founders. But thankfully, after that, they picked themselves up and kicked off Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus for the PS2, published by Sony exclusively for their platform. And that kicked off a series of fun, lighthearted platformers with a stealth spin and a really unique sense of style and character and vibe. People love these damn games. And I mean, like, uh, I feel like we should do a whole video on that series too, because I mean, where are we at with that? Anyway, uh, the original 2002 Sly Cooper game crushed, and they went on to make two more Sly Cooper games, with the series continuing into one more game in 2013 by another developer. I know, I know, I really hope we see more of that, but anyway, uh, moving into the PS3 era, Sucker Punch was looking to go bigger and bolder. Like Naughty Dog essentially graduating from colorful, fun Jack and Daxter and the Jack games to the more cinematic Uncharted series for the next generation, Sucker Punch pitched a few projects to their new best friends at Sony and ultimately landed on something called True True Hero, a project that would evolve into the first infamous game. Now, ditching splashy, cartoony raccoon heist hijinks for a bit more of an edgy superhero guy in a crumbling city may have seemed crazy at the time, but it resulted in a really, really cool game. Now, Infamous released in 2009 and was Sucker Punch's first open world game. It was also released at a time when open world games were all the rage, but this one hit a little differently. Now in it, you play as Cole McGrath. He's a bike delivery guy in this Empire City. It's a fictional East Coast city claimed to be based on New York, but yeah, being a New Yorker kind of feels a little different, but most notably because of all the comic booky type stuff it's going through. Empire City is racked by a mysterious virus, a crime wave. It has all these kind of comic book style gangs. And at the base of it all is this disastrous and mysterious explosion that left a chunk of the city in ruins. And now at the root of that explosion was Cole, who finds himself with electricity-based superpowers. He can absorb and shoot and utilize electricity with I think like 17 different abilities from blasting enemies, shooting out big electrical fields, using shields, tossing electrical bombs, gliding around on electrical wires, even sniping dudes with electric blasts. You're running around, you're climbing, and you're using electricity for offense and defense, and that becomes the main flow of the game. And how much coal relies on electricity is a lot of fun. Like a lot of your powers drain your electricity level. So you need to suck electricity up out of lampposts, TVs, air conditioning units, really anything you can find to not only keep your powers topped off, but also to heal. So the game becomes a really good push-pull of energy between you, enemies, objects in the environment, and doing all this while like running through the streets and climbing and jumping on rooftops can be fairly challenging at spots. I mean, enemies had really good aim and are pretty relentless sometimes, but I saved the most significant part for last. You know, the fact that Cole can actually heal by absorbing this electricity. So it's really quite a balancing act, like blasting enemies, ducking away to suck a little bit of juice out of a TV antenna or whatever to stay alive, and then jumping back in with a big blast. The game just had a really fun and challenging gameplay loop. The climbing and the jumping was a little floaty, but like uh, being a superpower badass did still feel great, thanks to it just feeling satisfying to shoot lightning blasts from your hand with great vibration and visual and sound effects to really round it all out.
Now you had different city districts and some unique enemy types that shook things up really well, but another fun aspect was the morality system called karma. Now throughout the game, Cole could shift towards good guy or bad guy and gain access to different powers by acting out in the game. You know, heal civilians or suck their life force for more health. Kill pedestrians, take on good or evil side quests, and make big decisions in story moments throughout the game, and all that contributes to the karma rankings that all have different levels and will affect your appearance as you grow up one of the ladders. Your lightning and your clothes look cooler, in my opinion, if you're a bad guy, and a little bit more pure if you're a goody two-shoes. Pedestrians would also react to you differently as well. Now, I mean, like, if you can't tell, like, this was all very, very cool. At the time, you know, the morality system was awesome, and we still don't see enough of them in games. It's kind of like becoming a thing of the past, uh, becoming a Sith Lord in Knights of the Old Republic, or slowly becoming like a devil in Fable, or just a great space hero man in Mass Effect. These types of systems had like really left lasting impacts for the way of player choice, and Infamous has had just the right amount of flexibility and direct impact on your superpowers and stuff that it was just great, to be honest. And from a storytelling perspective, it was also pretty solid for a few reasons. Number one, the presentation had a comic book graphic novel style to it all that just really worked. Sucker Punch had experience with this. I mean, they knew what they were doing by this point, but also the music and art style sold it all really, really well from Cole grappling with being considered a hero or a freak to relationship stuff uh, to the supporting characters, specifically most notably like Zeke, who might come off kind of as like a quirky comic relief goofball, but who has his own depth. And then of course the main villain himself, Kessler. Now Kessler is shrouded in mystery for the game, like a spooky cool bad guy who seemingly bombed the city that ultimately ends up uh, you know, spoiler alert for an old PS3 game, but like straight up is older Cole from an alternate future timeline where he failed to save the world. There's this thing called the beast that's gonna show up and destroy everything. And this is where Cole kind of realizes who he is and how he needs to be a hero, depending on how you play the game. Now it's a banger of an ending in my opinion, one with like a cool reveal twist, but also the setup of this big, looming existential threat that our hero must prepare for and face off against, if you tune in next time. Now, why this also really works and why it's such a big deal is because it's completely unique. It's new intellectual property. You know, it's not an adaptation. This isn't a Marvel game or a DC hero or some big weird multimedia plan thing. Sucker Punch just wanted to make a superhero game and came up with their own hero their own world filled with conduits and all this depth, and they told a story. This could not have been easy to pull off. Think about where they were at at the time too. The original Iron Man movie that kind of kicked off the whole MCU extravaganza thing, only released in 2008. So with Infamous still releasing in 2009, the, the playing field was pretty wide open. There was no blueprint other than just comic books and cartoons, just cool stuff we've seen in the past, but never on the insane level of like Avengers Infinity War. And we were so far from that. And for a game to carve out its own cool little superhero adventure and do it successfully is worth applauding. They really blazed the trail. And we haven't really seen a lot of unique, completely individual superheroes superheroes in their own games, in their own worlds like this since. But like I said, this paved the way for a really cool sequel that really upped the ante in every way. They were able to because the original game sold well over 2 million copies when it first released. It went on to become a PS3 greatest hits. It was a big deal. And I'd argue that Infamous 2 was even better in every way. But there was something about that first game, just the lightning in a bottle, pun intended of it, where you just had to be there. Maybe next time we'll talk about Infamous 2 or Infamous Second Son, but for right now, we just wanna give props to the OG. That's why we think Infamous was a big deal, but now we wanna hear from you guys in the comments. Do you have memories playing this game? What were your first reactions to it if you popped it in your console back in the day? Maybe you're a little younger and you didn't catch this one. Maybe you've played it more recently. I'd love to know what you think. It's definitely a little dated here and there, but it's still fun. Let's talk anything Infamous, from the story to the characters to the gameplay. Down in the comments, we definitely wanna hear from you. If you like this little trip down memory lane and you love talking games with us, all you gotta do to help us out is if you feel like it, clicking the like button. We would appreciate that. But hey, if you're 
you're new, consider subscribing as well because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.